Passport bros now? That's what y'all call it? I can't believe that y'all came up with that. People are laughing at y'all right now. Like it's just about a whole group of miserable ass males who, oh my God, I don't even know how to explain this so pathetic. So here's an opportunity for Passport Bros that you probably haven't heard about. And that's pretty much why you watch my channel. It's so you hear about things that you normally wouldn't hear about because you have to, you have to cast a wide net. You have to widen the, your spheres of influence that you come across so that this way you hear about things you normally wouldn't. So um, you can get paid $15,000 to move to this Italian island, this idyllic Italian island, but there's a catch. So Sardinia is paying people almost $15,000 to move to this city in Italy. If you've ever dreamed of living La Dolce Vita, the sweet life in Italy, now's your chance to get paid for it, sort of. The government of Sardinia, Italy, is prepared to pay people 15,000 lira, which is about $14,767. However, that may have changed because the euro's value is faltering Thanks to the fact that the Europeans decided that they wanted to stick it to Putin and they decided to, uh, you know, you know, how they always tell you that you don't bite the hand that feeds you. Well, when you're getting natural gas and coal and oil and all this from Russia, it kind of isn't that smart to go up against them right away. It's probably not that smart. But uh, yeah, they're about to freeze their asses off this winter. And uh, even right now, as you know, I made a video about uh, UK and the British pound sterling is down against the dollar to the point where now they're talking about having to print money since uh, they're so deep in debt thanks to their pension obligations. So basically, Europe's in a lot of trouble. Now, Sardinia, part of Italy, because as you know, Italy has been also having its economic woes, which they're going to end up having more. Um, the long story is that Europe is dying. Population is decreasing. It's on the decline. They're not having enough children. Um, some of the men there might blame Western uh, feminism for part of the reason why they're no longer having their traditional marriages, they're no longer having uh, traditional family sizes. Um, some people might blame feminism for it, some people might blame the economy for it, but the bottom line is, a lot of those European countries are dying. Now, I talked about this in another video a little while ago, where I explained to you that Hungary was trying to convince women to have children by offering them subsidies on three-seater vehicles like minivans and SUVs. Anything that has three rows and seats a bunch of kids because they're trying to get these women to have children. The problem is you're offering women minivans and subsidies on minivans and three-seaters, and that doesn't in any way deal with the underlying problem that the women of Western liberal feminism have become so polluted and so toxic that... Either it's them who doesn't want the role as a mother and having children, or it's the men who don't want to deal with them. Because there's a lot of countries in Europe that are having huge problems with uh, birth rates and having traditional sized families. And uh, ultimately, it's, you know, these, these economies are, are dying, and that's the bottom line. So Sardinia is no different. It says, uh, According to a translated press release, Sardinia is setting aside 45 million lira, I believe that's euros actually, I should say euros, to subsidize 3,000 grants up to 15,000 each. Now, we have created the conditions for young people to decide to stay and develop the economic fabric of the most fragile territories. Christian Salinas, Sardinia's president, stated in the translated press release. Now, first of all, if you're a person who speaks Italian, and you happen to be down with the passport bros, this just might be up your alley. Now, I don't know, and I'm not going to make any accusations, but I don't know if these grants are being given to people of color as much as they are going to give them out to white Europeans who want to move to Sardinia. Because ultimately... What this is, is they're trying to rebuild a population by taking people from the outside. We know of it as immigration, because that's how America has been keeping its population from declining. 
by bringing in immigrants. Now, in America, white males are more single, unmarried, and childless than ever before. Black males are more single, unmarried, and childless than ever before. White women and black women are in the exact same straits, except a lot of them have decided that what they're going to do is they'll get pregnant by men they're not married to, and ultimately they end up sharing men in order to have these pregnancies, either because the men don't want to marry them or it's because they refuse to uh, submit to the man for marriage. Some of these women are saying that marriage is a slavery and modern day slavery, just like in the last video I posted. But uh, they, they're trying to rebuild a population. And the question on my mind is, well, who do they want in this population? Hungary and uh, I believe it was Sweden and Switzerland have tried to do subsidies of the exact same type because what they've been trying to do is they're trying to keep their population and their culture alive. The problem is once the men start divesting and the men start going out and getting foreign women, especially Asian women, you no longer have your traditional culture. Now, in some of these countries' cases, they don't really care what you are, who you look like, or whatever. They don't really care. The problem is they're just trying to keep the place alive. So I don't know if uh, they're offering these subsidies to anybody or if they just want to try to keep up a white European Italian population. And if that's what they want to do, fine by me. I have no interest of going. As you know, I haven't ever traveled to Europe because I've had no interest whatsoever in Europe. My next trip is Bora Bora, and after that, or before that, it'll probably be to Singapore, possibly also to the Philippines. But uh, I have no interest in Europe whatsoever. So um, as uh, Captain Kirk would say, let them die, you know. <laughs> but anyway... Um, it says getting 15000 to move to Italy sounds excellent, but this offer does have a catch. To be eligible, you must move to a Sardinian town with a population of fewer than 3,000 people. Who the fuck wants to do that? My, I have more than 3,000 people. If I, if I walk in any one direction and I walk for one mile, there's more than 3,000 people. Why would I want to move to a town with like nobody there? Put the 15000 towards renovating a home. So they're giving you 15000 to renovate a home, but more than likely you're going to have to spend your own money in order to help renovate that home because chances are 15000 ain't going to be enough. Then you have to live there full time. You have to register Sardinia as your permanent residence within 18 months. Now, those are a hell of a lot of caveats. First of all, I have no interest right now until I retire of moving anywhere as a permanent resident. That's number one. Number two, $15,000 ain't that hard for me to make. I can make $15,000. I could, shit, I could do that in half a year using YouTube to do it. So $15,000 ain't that much. Um, I mean, that, that's not a big enough subsidy for you to get me to move to a place nobody wants to be. That population is obviously dying out. Um, it says, in the region of Calabria, New residents were promised $33,000 each, while in the village of Santo Stefano di Sassano, people were offered up to 52000 in grants to move and work there. The goal is to boost the local economy and breathe new life into small-scale communities. Gianluca Gallo, a regional counselor, told CNN in 2021. So, that is a possibility, my passport bros. You, if you speak, especially if you speak Italian, this just might be up your alley. And uh, I wanted to throw that up here because I wanted to make sure that you're aware of it. And then half of y'all are like fossilized. And y'all already know what I mean by that. Another thing is that a lot of y'all just look the same. I look alike. This 41-year-old left the U.S. for Bangkok and lives a luxurious lifestyle on $8,000 a month. Okay, so his name is Jesse Schoberg, began plotting his escape from Wisconsin, where he was born and raised when he was a teenager. It's your typical small town in the Midwest, small, quiet, not too much adventure. He tells CNBC, make it. I always knew that I wanted to get out and explore the world. Well, first of all, if you lived in Wisconsin, there ain't nothing there. All right, like those are the parts of America 
nobody wants to live in. See, I, you know, it's funny because I, I complain every now and then, but the reality is I am a New Yorker. Not only am I a New Yorker, but I make so much money that I can actually afford to stay here. Not only do I make enough money to afford to stay here, but I have a house that I can live where I have a ceiling fan above my head. I have a house where I can keep my stuff. I can park my cars in my yard. I can put my Desert Eagle and my AR-15. I can just leave it out and nobody can say anything. It feels good to have a house. See, if I had like one of those shitty apartments, stupid rentals, homeowners alliance breathing down my neck, I wouldn't be able to do the stuff that I can do. So I'm actually doing very, very well. Most people from around this country, they've already done studies. They say a lot of these people want to move to New York. Not so much California, but New York City. But what did they say about New York City? If I can make it there, I can make it anywhere. It's up to you, New York, New York. And that's why everybody wants to move here, because this is the most happening place in the world. I've been to all of these other major cities. I've been to Shanghai. I've been to Dubai. I've been to, what else, uh, Bangkok, just like in the story. I've been to Tokyo. Most of those places, I mean, they're really nice, but they're kind of boring. You know, they're really boring. It's like, if I really put my mind to it, I could start up a business on the street here in New York City I could buy a, a fucking food truck or some shit and make food. If I, it, It's like there's just so much opportunity. And that's not to say that there's not opportunity elsewhere. It's just that a lot of people want to move because most of the places they live suck. And they see the internet. They see all these places. They get excited. They get uh, 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 beliefs that they can make it in these other places. So they move. Now, this dude's living on $8,000. And in Bangkok... Having 8,000, what is it, 8,000 a month, if you have 8,000 a month, the key is, in my opinion, to live like you only make 4,000 a month because you could save that other 4,000 and you still live like a king. The average, per like, first of all, you need to understand, like, the average person in Thailand is living on less than $50 a day. And if you really add that up, for a whole year's worth of living expenses, you're probably going to come out, when you factor in food, you factor in um, housing, you want to have a nice house, you want to have a nice kitchen, you want to have nice air conditioning, you want to have a pool. If you were to draw that out, you're going to come out to about $20,000 a year. But this dude's making $8,000 a month. I'm, I'm, and it says he's an entrepreneur, splitting his time among more than 40 countries, so he's moving around, he has no plans to return to the U.S., Says Schoberg burked the traditional path of attending college, securing a nine to five job, instead choosing to move to Madison when he was nineteen, sharpening his coding skills. So this he's obviously like one of these computer engineers with their website design and development. By the time he turned twenty seven, however, Schoberg began to feel restless. He decided to move to a new city and researched apartments in Austin and Denver, but his mind kept drifting to Panama City, the capital of Panama, where he had one of the best vacations of his life, as he recalls. He moved to Panama City in two thousand eight and lived there for six years before packing his bags to travel the world full time as a digital nomad. In between his travels, Schoberg now calls Bangkok home. He, re he relocated to Thailand in December 2021 and shares a one-bedroom apartment with his fiance Janine. I want to see pictures of Janine. What's Janine look like? I want to see Janine. Are there pictures of Janine? Let's see. Oh, this is his profile. I honestly, I don't really care about the rest of his story. But it says as an entrepreneur and CEO, he earns about $230,000 per year. But, and it says his biggest expenses are his rent utilities, which together are about $2,700 each month. Now, you think about the average American who's spending $2,700 a month and they're getting like nothing out of it. You know, they were saying in a story I already showed you that the average apartment in Manhattan is costing $4,000 a month. Now, imagine if you had a job that allowed you to live mobily. And allowed you to move to a country like Thailand, Vietnam, Cambodia, or Philippines. And imagine that you were living on 2000 a month. Because to tell you the truth, 2710 is actually a bit high. So he must be living luxury. 
You can live, tw uh, first of all, the average person in these countries doesn't see $30,000 a year. And that's, that, that's just a reality. Philippines, the average person, the average Filipino is making less than $10,000 a year. Uh, Cambodia, Laos, Vietnam, average person is making less than $20,000 a year. Thailand, the average person is making less than $20,000, $25,000 a year. And uh, I've showed you those uh, stats. In fact, I had given you a breakdown of how much money those people there make. That is the reason why so many Americans are moving over to those countries. Because if you've worked in America and you retire, let's say you have a $35,000, $40,000 pension. Let's say you have a pension anywhere under $50,000. You move to one of those countries, you basically live like a king. In fact, you'll hate yourself for not moving there earlier. And God forbid you're a bachelor. You move to one of those countries... And you got a nice young wife half your age. I mean, I, I can't. This is the reason why these, these women are so angry at Passport Bros. Because the reality is we're killing it. We are killing it. We've got the wallets. We got the money. And as much as they've tried to say, oh, yeah, well, you broke and you lie and you say you're Chris Brown rich and you're not rich. These women don't want you. Reality is these women are smart enough to realize that when they have a husband, especially a foreign man, and he's got that foreign money coming in, they realize right away, they're like, listen, not only am I able to get married to this dude, but on top of that, he'll be able to provide for me. He'll be able to give me a family and provide for the family. He's not going nowhere because obviously you didn't like it in America. And then on top of that, We'll have everything we can have. He'll live here. I'll be near my family. And I'll, we'll be living it up. We'll be living La Vida Loca. So these women are smart. Not like the ones here in America. But they're busy hating on the passport bros. Because the passport bros have figured it out. The passport bros said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. First of all, I'm not broke. If you're making at least $50,000 a year, you damn sure aren't broke, especially if you live in a state with low cost of living. But if you're making enough to travel, I mean, these places aren't cheap. You're talking about $1,000 round trip. You're making enough to travel and you decide you, you want to travel. You want to get a wife overseas. No wonder why they're so angry. No wonder why they're mad. They were well, but, but you gotta remember, these are the same people who were mad when Kevin Samuels was calling them strags. I want to see Jesse's wife. That's what I want to see. He because it's it's he's got one thousand three hundred eighty four followers, and they mentioned his uh, what is this called Instagram? Uh, I don't see any pictures of I don't see any pictures of his wife. I want or his fiance, I should say. I don't. What, my girl. Uh oh, here it is. Uh oh, what she look like. Oh, snap. Look what Jesse's got. Wait, is his name Jesse? Yes, it is. Look what he's got. Oh, snap. Look what he got. Look what he got right here. This is my man. Passport bros, bro. Passport pride worldwide. So, yes, uh, Janine, as we can see, Janine is uh, his foreign... Bangkok. Can't uh, see much more of it. But yes, Janine is his foreign wife. Or his foreign fiance, I should say. So, there you go. J my man, he has done the... He's done what the... Pa he's a passport bro. He's doing... He's, he, Jesse Schoberg, has moved over there. And you know what he's done? He's basically taken... Another well-earning male off the table for these American women. And he got himself Janine. And uh, you're going to have a lot more of these angry white liberal feminists just angry about the fact that he decided to take his show on the road. And can you blame him? Can you blame him? Now, I want you to notice something. He's young. He's got a full head of hair. He's not fat. And um, what what what? See, and I, I like seeing young passport bros because then the women have no leg to stand on. They because what they try to do is they always what did Kevin Samuel say? Shame. Uh, what is it? Shame, blame, and explain. And they have sign language. It's uh, shame, insults, guilt, and the need to be right. So what do they do when they see these passport bros? Especially when it's these young passport bros, there's nothing they can say. They can't call you bald. 
They can't call you old. They can't call you broke. The fucking guy makes $230,000 a year. Can't call you broke. Can't say that, oh, yeah, well, you ain't got no game. You don't know how to spit game. You can't spit game to the women. You don't know how to spit game. You got no mouthpiece. All these passport bros are winning. Now, here's the thing. We're entering... We're we're in fall right now. We're into we're about to enter the coldest winter on record, thanks to Russia cutting off European gas supplies. The here's the thing: summer is over for 2022. It's over, but the passport bros did it up so well that we've left a sour taste in these strags mouths, and they're angry. They are angry. We've left a sour taste. I can't, when I went over there to Maldives and I was showing some of them my photos, I didn't put my photos up here on uh, this YouTube. I only put the videos. But I was showing them my private photos of the wet, wet. And I, I we left, we passport bros, we left a sour taste in their mouth. And they're mad. And they ain't going to stop being mad because right now it tastes sour. This is sour. It tastes a little sour and it tastes a little salty. We left a sour taste in their mouth and they are mad. They are spitting venom, venom from the snake's mouth. They are spitting it. They are mad because we left a very sour taste in their mouth. While these dudes, and especially these dudes, because there's a lot of feminized, angry dudes who were right here, summer 2022, and they were lonely, and they were mad, and they were dry. We left a sour taste in their mouth, too. And, they, and they, they, they're popping up all over TikTok, because I don't know what it is that attracts them so much to TikTok, but YouTube got shorts too, and so does Facebook. They got reels or something where they're trying to suck you in and try to take away uh, people off of TikTok. But the reality is these people are popping up on TikTok every freaking day, and they're leaving behind these turds where they're showing you just how mad they are. We pat, we pat, we killed it. We killed, pat, like, I, you know, it's so crazy. After... After I got back from Maldives, I think it was either after I got back or before I left, that was when Kevin Samuels died. And and these 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 strags were celebrating. And I was like, you know what? If y'all think that the anti-you rhetoric is just gonna go away now that this guy is gone, I'm like, you got another thing coming. It never dawned upon me that summer was right around the corner. And summer was coming. You know how they say winter is coming on Game of Thrones? No, 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 no. Summer was coming. And in that summer, with these dudes with these passports and these camera phones, they rolled overseas and they did it so big, sending all these video clips back. They walk in the streets in Brazil, walk in the beaches in Brazil. They in Colombia. Medellin, Colombia. They in Mexico. They in Cuba. They in Dominican Republic. It's like we did it up. We did it up so good. And we left a sour taste in their mouth. And they mad. So all I'm saying is that you got to get your passport so that this way next year we're going to do it bigger. We're going to do it better. 2023, we're going to do it bigger and better. We're going to do it even bigger and better. We're going to do it so big that they're going to be all over TikTok asking why we do it so big. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying to you. Get your passport. You don't have to spend another night lonely and upset with just your lotion in your hand. You get yourself a nice foreign wife. And you're going to do it bigger and better. You're going to be leaving La Vida Loca overseas. That's what I'm saying to you. So that's that was basically the main message here. Let's be like Jesse. This is the guy you want to be like. You want to make $200,000 a year. And you want to live it big. So big. 
They can't even imagine how big you live. Until you show them the photos and then they just angry. Boo-hoo! Oh my goodness! Why are they getting the passports? Why are they leaving? And that's just it. That That's all you gotta do. I know I'll be seeing this one guy that be popping up on my FYP. You know, a lot of people been roasting on his old ass lately. He sitting up here on his back porch filming shit man the same old type of videos like 25 videos in a row on his back porch like you're sitting up here talking about passports past 25 videos and you're still here on your back porch like when are you gonna be leaving been talking about it for what two three months now you could have been gone you could have been gone why are you still talking about passports and leaving i don't get it i just i, I just don't understand it to be continued